Welcome back, everyone. So in today's session, we'll be going over one of the most um, commonly encountered benign salivary gland tumors, pleomorphic adenoma. This lesion is like particularly important to understand because of its prevalence, its variable presentation, and uh, its potential, albeit rare, for malignant transformation. So let's walk through its um, characteristics, diagnosis, and management in a bit more detail. Pleomorphic adenoma, which is also sometimes called a benign mixed tumor, is actually the most frequently occurring neoplasm of the salivary glands. It makes up more than half of all salivary gland tumors, especially in like the, the parotid and submandibular glands. And uh, the term mixed tumor comes from its really diverse histologic appearance. Like you'll often see this combo of epithelial and mesenchymal-like tissue patterns all within the same lesion. Over the years, it's also been referred to by a bunch of other names like iceberg tumor, endothelioma, brachioma, and even um, enchondroma, uh, which just reflects like how varied its morphology can be. So clinically speaking, pleomorphic adenomas tend to show up like most often in the parotid gland, though they can definitely arise in any of the major salivary glands. And um, they can even appear in the minor glands, especially like those on the palate. When the parotid is involved, a hallmark clinical sign is um, swelling in the parotid region that kind of pushes the ear lobe upward. It usually shows up in adults between like their fourth and sixth decades of life, though younger patients and yeah, even children can be affected too. There's also like a slight female predominance. In terms of presentation, these tumors are typically like slow growing and painless. In early stages, the swelling is firm, but still movable though. Um, over time, it can become nodular and a little irregular to the touch. Some of these lesions grow medially between like anatomical structures such as the ramus and the stylomandibular ligament, and that leads to what's called a, a characteristic dumbbell shape. When it's in the intraoral minor salivary glands, most commonly like in the palate, you might see a dome-shaped non-tender swelling in the palatal region. For imaging, a CT scan is usually like the first step to assess the size and location. However, to actually differentiate between benign and malignant forms, MRI tends to be um, more reliable. Sciolography might also show what's called a ball in hand appearance. It's a classic clue, but yeah, less commonly used these days. Histologically, pleomorphic adenoma is usually um, well encapsulated and shows a combo of epithelial and myoepithelial components that are embedded in like a mucoid or myxoid stroma. The myoepithelial cells often have this um, plasmacytoid appearance, so round with eccentric nuclei and eosinophilic cytoplasm. And like one really important detail here is that even though the tumor is usually encapsulated, sometimes you get incomplete capsular development or even these little microscopic extensions into surrounding tissue like uh, satellite nodules or pseudopodia. And that can like uh, increase the risk of recurrence if it's not completely excised. So now let's talk treatment. Surgical excision is um, the standard of care. If the tumor is in the superficial lobe of the parotid gland, then like a superficial parodidectomy is usually done. And yeah, with preservation of the facial nerve for deeper lesions, you might need to go with a total parodidectomy. And uh, in submandibular tumors, the whole gland along with the tumor is typically removed. For palatal lesions, you excise down to the periosteum, including the overlying mucosa. While recurrence is like uncommon with proper treatment, it can definitely happen especially if the tumor isn't fully removed or uh, if there's seeding during surgery. In rare situations, pleomorphic adenomas can also show up in like ectopic locations and actually mimic odontogenic cysts or tumors, which makes diagnosis um, a bit trickier. And even though it's rare, malignant transformation is possible, particularly in like longstanding uh, untreated cases. So yeah, that brings us to the end of our look at pleomorphic adenoma. It's definitely one of those classic topics that shows up in both like clinical exams and in actual patient care decision-making. Thanks so much for joining and uh, I'll see you in the next lecture.